Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant and the most commonly consumed legal psychoactive substance. It has a wide range of effects for most people and is considered safe in limited amounts. Unlike many other psychoactive drugs, caffeine is legal and is one of the most widely used substances in the world. So in this video, we're going to discuss what caffeine does to the body. The video is going to be amazing so make sure you stick to the end. Caffeine begins to affect your body very quickly. It reaches a peak level in your blood within 30 to 60 minutes. It has a half-life of 3 to 5 hours. The half-life is the time it takes for your body to eliminate half of the drug. The remaining caffeine can stay in your body for a long time. Caffeine is absorbed into the blood and body tissues. Absorption is virtually complete about 45 minutes after ingestion. The peak plasma caffeine concentration is reached 15 to 120 minutes after ingestion. Caffeine's effects will last for several hours depending on how quickly or slowly it's metabolized by the body. As the body becomes resistant to the drug, people who regularly consume caffeine may barely notice its effects. However, for someone who is very sensitive to caffeine, effects may persist for hours or until the next day. Caffeine may boost weight loss or prevent weight gain, possibly by suppressing the appetite and temporarily reducing the desire to eat. Weight loss products that are marketed as thermogenic may contain caffeine and ephedra or ephedrine. Too much caffeine can make it hard to nod off when you go to bed at night. Even moderate amounts can cause insomnia in some people, especially if you have it too close to bedtime. The effects may be worse as you age. Avoid caffeine in the afternoon and evening if you notice it affects your sleep. And remember, it's not just in tea and coffee, it's also in chocolate, energy drinks, and other prepackaged foods and drinks. The other downside is that caffeine may make you feel jittery or anxious, especially if you take it in too much. If you have existing anxiety or panic disorder, your doctor may advise you to avoid caffeine. In other cases, Caffeine can boost your mental well-being. It boosts the flow of dopamine, a brain chemical that makes you feel happy and engaged with the world around you. This may be why drinking a moderate amount of coffee has reduced some study participants' risk of depression and suicide. Caffeine travels within the bloodstream and crosses into the placenta. Since it's a stimulant, it can cause your baby's heart rate and metabolism to increase. Too much caffeine can cause slowed fetal growth and an increased risk of miscarriage. In most cases, a little caffeine is safe during pregnancy. There's some evidence that large amounts of caffeine can interfere with the estrogen production and metabolism needed to conceive. Because caffeine is legal, slang terms are generally not used when referring to it. Slang terms for coffee and tea, two of the most common naturally caffeinated beverages, include joe and cuppa. Caffeine can improve mood and help people feel more productive. It's believed to work by blocking the neurotransmitter adenosine's receptors, increasing excitability in the brain. Up to 400 mg of caffeine a day appears to be safe for most healthy adults. That's roughly the amount of caffeine in 4 cups of brewed coffee, 10 cans of cola, or 2 energy shot drinks. Just 1 teaspoon of powdered caffeine is equivalent to about 28 cups of coffee, such high levels of caffeine can cause serious health problems and possibly death. Caffeine works best when you take it on an intermittent, off and on basis. Higher doses can have much more potent effects. A dose of 500 mg or 600 mg of caffeine can affect you much like a low dose of amphetamine. When you consume caffeine daily, it's less effective as a stimulant. Caffeine can be used to treat some types of headaches, including migraines, some over-the-counter pain medication contains caffeine. Your doctor can tell you if caffeine might work for you. Caffeine doesn't decrease your appetite, so there's no point in using it to diet or decrease your hunger. Caffeine doesn't help you sober up if you're drunk. Mixing caffeine and alcohol increases your chances of drinking and driving or getting into a vehicle with someone who has been drinking. This could lead to you or someone being hurt or killed. You might not realize how drunk they are and the caffeine or energy drink might mask the drowsiness related to the drinking. You might also drink more than normal if you combine alcohol and caffeine energy drinks. 
The more alcohol you drink, the higher the risk that you may pass out or suffer an alcohol-related injury. The large variability of CYP1A2 activity influences the clearance of caffeine and may be affected by factors such as gender, race, genetic polymorphisms, disease, and exposure to inducers. Two studies have reported that regular intakes of caffeine for one week did not alter caffeine pharmacokinetics. However, a further study suggested that the daily consumption of at least three cups of coffee increased CYP1A2 activity. Caffeine can improve physical performance during endurance exercise. The European Food Safety Agency EFSA, recognizes that caffeine can increase endurance performance, endurance capacity, and reduction in perceived exertion. However, the effects on short-term, high-intensity exercise remain inconclusive. Caffeine affects adenosine receptors in the brain, coffee also contains polyphenol, and these two act on various pathways. Studies have suggested that drinking coffee may help enhance some thinking skills and slow the mental decline that comes with age. These symptoms tend to go away as the caffeine starts to break down. Some studies show that caffeine can help your body recover more quickly after hard exercise by making and restocking a stored form of fuel called glycogen. It seems to do this best if you combine it with carbohydrates, like in certain sports gels, sports bars, and drinks. Though the reason isn't clear, caffeine can spike your blood pressure for a short while and sometimes over the long term as well. It could be that it blocks a hormone that keeps your arteries wide and pressure down. Or it might cause your body to release more adrenaline, a hormone that raises blood pressure. Study participants who drink coffee have performed better on tests. Also, older people who consume caffeine may be less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease and other age-related memory issues. You might have heard some people say that coffee gives them heartburn. Coffee does increase the amount of acid that your stomach produces. Some scientists have connected this effect to the bitter taste of caffeine. So a more bitter-tasting food or drink would create more acid. If you have an acid reflux condition like gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, you may find that caffeine worsens your symptoms. Caffeine is also a diuretic, which means that it encourages your body to urinate more. An overdose can result in death due to convulsions. Overdosing happens by consuming large amounts of caffeine, most often in energy drinks or diet pills. Caffeine seems to help prevent gallstones and inflammation, among other medical conditions. Some studies show that regular caffeine might help keep away certain neurological diseases like Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and epilepsy. Natural sources of caffeine include coffee beans, tea leaves, and cocoa beans. It can also be produced synthetically. These drugs are called stimulants. Caffeine acts as an adenosine receptor antagonist. Caffeine blocks the adenosine receptor to keep you from feeling sleepy. A small number of studies have looked at the potential impact of certain types of liver disease, including cirrhosis and hepatitis B or C, suggesting that they may cause a reduction of plasma clearance of caffeine in correlation with the severity of the disease. Caffeine is primarily metabolized in the liver by cytochrome P450 enzymes, which are responsible for more than 90% of caffeine clearance. Research from Johns Hopkins University suggests that a dose of caffeine after a learning session may help boost long-term memory. It has been suggested that caffeine enemas may help prepare the colon for an endoscopy or colonoscopy by supporting the excretion of bile through the colon wall. Coffee consumption may help decrease the risk of cirrhosis and slow the rate of disease progression in hepatitis C infection. Observational studies have found that coffee may have protective benefits for people with hepatocellular cancer. There is some evidence that caffeine may help protect people from an eye disorder known as blepharospasm. This condition, caused by an abnormal brain function, makes people blink incessantly and can leave them functionally blind. Researchers have found that caffeine may help protect the lens of the eye against damage that could lead to the formation of cataracts. Some scientists have suggested that caffeine may guard against certain skin cancers. A study of 217,883 participants analyzed the association between caffeine intake and the risk of developing kidney stones. Those who consumed more caffeine had a lower risk of developing kidney stones in a study of 968,432 men and women, participants who drank four cups of coffee a day had a 49% lower risk of death from oral cancer, compared with those who drank no coffee at all or only an occasional cup. 
Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This is all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.